Hey guys, this is your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series for the U.S. Battleship line. This is the Tier 5 New York class of battleships. There were two of these ships completed in 1911 and commissioned in 1914. The USS New York and the USS Texas. And as I stated in the Wyoming video, the design for this ship came, the design number is Design 502, which is one of the many proposed Wyoming class designs, but was ultimately rejected for the Wyoming class for reasons I stated in that video. The design of this ship was not originally intended to have any really any aircraft armament, and all of the 5-inch guns that we see on the stock hull are all really intended for destroyer and torpedo boat defense. Of course, in this game, the secondaries have a really short range and are thus not that useful, but, well, you know what it is. The interesting part is, is it did come with two 3-inch anti-aircraft guns mounted on top of the seaplane cranes, and, or I guess they're boat cranes, I guess they could be for both, and... That was kind of a revolutionary thought at the time, because they had absolutely amazing arcs to cover the sky. Of course, those were later removed, and these were also the last class of battleships to launch as coal-fired battleships. They were converted in 1928 to oil during their refits between the wars. In terms of service history... The USS New York was the flagship for the U.S. Navy during the occupation of Veracruz, and was the flagship ship of Battleship Division 9 during World War I. She is believed to have actually, actually accidentally sunk a U-boat during World War I. During her refit in 1938, she was fitted with the experimental XAF radar, which allowed her to detect both sea and air threats at extended ranges. The New York survived World War II and was sunk in 1948 during the Operation Crossroads nuclear test where she was sunk after the second nuclear detonation. The USS Texas, which is also in-game, we'll switch to her, was the first U.S. Navy ship to mount a considerable amount of anti-aircraft. And that's kind of unique in the fact that her refit happened before any other ships from the World War I era with regards to adding more anti-aircraft. Of course, not quite what we see here in-game. This is obviously the World War II refit. Texas took part in the shore bombardment during the Normandy Beach landings and sh shelled Cherbourg and Point de Hoc during those invasions. And the Texas was one of the first U.S. ships to launch an aircraft off the number two turret here on a makeshift platform. Texas also received the experimental CXAM radar, which was a modification of the XAF radar that was put on the New York, and that had obviously the same advantages of being able to detect ships and aircraft from extended ranges. Texas is the only ship that still exists that has survived both world wars, and the nice part about it is, is you can go and visit the Texas today in Houston, Texas, obviously, in her World War II configuration. And the Texas is actually quite a lot of fun, but again, she suffers from the same problems that New York has, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Actually, we'll just go ahead and talk about it right now. Uh, you know, this ship used to be a very good ship. She had a lot of capabilities and played very well for a Tier 5 ship. And, and for the most part, in Tier 5, she still does well. The problem is, is, with the way the matchmaker in the game currently is set up, she sees almost exclusively Tier 7 fights. Yeah, you heard that correctly. This Tier 5 battleships almost exclusively sees Tier 7 fights. In fact, I can go ahead and show you just the four battles that I played today... Only one of those was a Tier 5 fight. Only one. And I did 100,000 damage in it, but I, I sank, so we're not going to watch that video. But all these other ones that you see here was like 28,000, 30,000, and like 7,000. And prior to these videos, you know, when I was playing it a little bit earlier this week, I couldn't get out of Tier 7 fights. 
it just didn't happen. In fact, the video I'm going to show you is from a tier 7 fight. And it is one of the most frustrating things ever because she is completely outgunned, outmaneuvered, out anti-aircraft. She just is punished at that tier. She doesn't have the gun accuracy. I mean, there's just a whole slew of problems with this tier 5 ship getting shoehorned into a tier 7 fight. But unfortunately, that's where she's at. That said, you know, when she does end up in a tier 6 match or a tier 5 match where she's the top dog... She has really good AA for her tier, although it's no longer the best. Gun accuracy is relatively poor, but the ship does really well in a brawling environment. Uh, you know, she doesn't have the secondaries of the German battleships. She's got a lot more punch because of the 14-inch guns. That helps her out a lot. So when they do hit, they hit like a freaking truck. Overall, though, expect a very long grind through numerous Tier 7 matches where you just are just swamped right away at the beginning. I mean, it's it's not pretty, guys. I, I wish Wargaming would fix that, bump these ships down to, you know, maybe a C and just tier 6s would be probably the most beneficial thing that you could do for them. Let's talk about the stats. She's got 49,100 hit points, a boatload of armor, 30% for her TDS. Not too shabby, not really all that great either, especially given... You know, her later refits included torpedo bulges. Her main battery consists of 10 14-inch guns in 5 turrets in a 2-1-2 configuration. The turret arcs are really bad. This middle turret, you might as well forget that it even exists. Her secondary armament consists of 6 5-inch 51 caliber Mark 7 guns. There's 3 of them in each side and they are mounted... Right here in the casemate above the hole, the main deck. Her main battery firing range is 15.6 kilometers. Her secondary is fired to four. That's without advanced firing training on the captain. You can see I have Steven Seagal on here. In terms of anti-aircraft, her long-range anti-aircraft is the 10 3-inch 50 caliber Mark 22 guns. Those are mounted here. You can see them. The There's five on each side. There are also four of the twin 40 millimeter Bofors. And they are mounted, let's see if I can find them all. One, two, and then three, four, I'm assuming. There's the other three inch guns. Yep. And then, of course, eight of the 20 millimeter Orlikans. If you're looking for a Texas with any aircraft, this is your hot ticket here. The Texas has a boatload of them. That's definitely the anti-aircraft king for Tier 5. Back to the New York. Maneuverability, 21 knots. That's, well, for lack of a better phrase, the standard for the <laughs> all the way up till Tier 7. Turning circle is 600 meters, which is really good. Rudder shift time of 12 and a half seconds, which isn't too bad. The detection range by sea, 15.5. Detection range by air, 10.4. As you can see, her gun range just barely outdoes her detection range. And that's probably the reason why she suffers the most at, at in those Tier 7 fights. Is she just doesn't have the stealth capabilities and then doesn't have the range capabilities. Although when we go to the modules, we can talk a little bit about the, the range increasing module. Let's go ahead and talk about these upgrades. Main Armaments Mod 1. Yep, still a standard. In the second slot, I'm picking AA Guns Mod 2. I don't see any reason to take any of these other ones, and let me explain why. Artillery Plotting Room 1 is going to give you 16% additional to your main battery firing range. The problem is, is you're not getting a reduction in your dispersion at that. So you're firing at longer ranges, but you're already shotgunning at your maximum range of 15.6 kilometers. So adding more range isn't going to make the ship more usable. In fact, at max range, this ship is almost useless with regards to accuracy. Don't count on hitting anything at that range. So adding 16%, not going to help you any. Making the turrets turn faster, but making the guns reload longer, not a good trade-off for this ship. You already have a relatively long reload of 34.3 seconds. We don't need to add more to it just for a pittance in terms of turret rotation. 
AA Guns Mod 2 adds 20% to the AA Mounts firing range. Those ranges that I gave you starting at 4.2 with the Bofors and the 3-inch guns and then stepping down to 2.4 for the 20mm Orlikans. You know, that that's with that module on thrown on there. Is, so that's that's good. Secondaries, as we already said, you've only got six of them, three on each side. This is a really bad upgrade for this ship. So I just don't recommend any of them but AA Guns Mod 2. The last slot is obviously going to be Damage Control Systems Mod 1. You just don't find yourself having your steering gears or, or your engines knocked out very often in these ships. So that's why I don't recommend those. This battle is like 87,000 damage and it's a tier 7 fight. It is a victory, which is nice. So let's go ahead and get to that video. Okay, so as you can see, it's a tier 7 fight. We've got rangers on both teams. We got a Colorado and a New Mexico on the other team, and Ganais now and, and Bayern on ours. And you can see there's a number of tier five battleships. So I mean, it's not like we're in a super tier seven heavy fight, but trust me, you will get in those fights, and it is not pleasant to be stuck in a tier seven fight where you're the only tier five in the fight. It's just not fun. Of course, this is Neighbors is probably one of my more favorite maps to play. I spawned on the exact opposite side of the map that I like to spawn on, though. So that's not a good thing. You work with what you got. Oh, that terrible Steven Seagal voice. <laughs> anyway, the New York does have a reasonably good acceleration for a ship of her size. Uh, you know, for a battleship, not too bad. We're going to show you those gun arcs here in a minute. They're, they're bad. They are legitimately bad. I... I forgetting, I'm forgetting which one, the Texas or the New York, has the better arcs. I want to say Texas was a little bit better, but I mean, they're, they're basically the same. It's almost negligible, the difference. And what makes the Texas a much better ship than the New York is the fact that pretty much nothing Tier 5, 6, and probably Tier 7 in terms of aircraft can really touch it. Because there's just that much AA on it. And if you put an AA spec captain, like if I were to throw my Iowa captain on there, forget it. You're not going to get an aircraft anywhere near that ship. We are going to head over to the islands. As I said in the video, there, there's your gun angles. As I said in the first part of this video, the ship is a brawler. And I want to close the distance as best I can because that long range engagements that we're going to start seeing don't do well in this ship. You know, you've got a 15 and a half kilometer detection range, 15.6 kilometer firing range. That's not a lot of range when your dispersion is, you know, three battleships wide at that tier. So definitely not a, a battle that you want to fight if you can avoid it. So we're going to try and use the islands to the best of our advantage. Unfortunately, the Ranger is upgraded, and that means their aircraft, well, they, they're going to be hard to kill, but we're going to try our best. With dive bombers, you want to, it, it's, it, it's a difficult balance. With dive bombers, you absolutely want to turn yourself so that you are, so that they're going to attack your broadside. Torpedo bombers are obviously the exact opposite. Thankfully, this ranger ignores me and goes for the Bayern instead. Could not have asked for a better trade-off there. Can only hope that these torpedo bombers ignore us and go for someone else. Our CV is a bit... Well, for one, he's strike package. And so is theirs, it looks like. That doesn't mean good things. The torpedo bombers are incoming. We're going to turn and we're going to try and shoot at this kamikaze. And, of course, one of the big disadvantages to the New York is her turrets do not turn fast enough to keep up with her turning. So she turns tighter than her guns allow. And good. Okay, so, hey, we managed to shoot one down. All right. None of those torps are going to hit me. And the Bayern only takes two. That hurts him more than it hurts me. But it could be worse. He could have taken a lot more than those, especially since he did absolutely nothing to try and mitigate that. And here you can see there's just... There's no range. Like, everything is hovering on the edge of that range. All I've got here is 
is a, a destroyer really to shoot at. This Konigsberg is in range. We'll try. Watch the dispersion on this. Look at that. That is just nuts. And of course... <laughs> Woo! Two hover pens for 2,000 damage. Ah. <sighs> That dispersion and superstructures, like, that's going to be a common theme here. Thankfully, nothing can see me where I'm currently at, so so long as I don't fire, I can't be seen. That, oh, never mind. Here I was going to go on some nice lecture about how, you know, we'd, we'd be able to, you know, fire at things, and... Yeah. Uh, you can do quite a bit of damage to a New Mexico with this ship. You do have the same guns in terms of the actual barrel and you're shooting the same shell. But we're going to find out here that it's a little bit harder than it looks. Three penetrations for only 5,000 damage. Yikes. <laughs> and of course now we're back to not really having any targets because we've got mountains in the way. Keep on pushing to the islands. You know, it's a slow, methodical approach. That New Mexico is still sailing broadside. We're going to go ahead and... Well, we're going to take another pot shot at him, see what we can find. That poor New York over there, though, he, he's opened himself up for a lot of problems. Okay. Another about... 5.5k off that New Mexico... That was a little bit better gun accuracy, but he slowed down and he turned out in a way, so that, that's, you know, that's the majority of the reason why we didn't do a whole lot of damage there. Uh, obviously, the dispersion doesn't help either, but... You know, for how interesting uh, of a history that these ships had, you know, the Wikipedia article has this really fascinating statement in there about how reliable and how accurate the guns were on this. But when you play it in the game, and I get that historical accuracy is a terrible thing to, you know, base the performance of a ship on, and that there's there's game balance needs to be key. I, I can't help myself but, but wonder why we can't get a little bit better gun accuracy. Oh, friendly fired a little bit. Why we can't get a little bit better gun accuracy in this ship in exchange for the fact that it is now the worst tier 5 battleship by a long shot. You know, Bayern completely destroys, sorry, not Bairn, Koenig completely destroys this ship in brawling and in any aircraft and in maneuverability and in speed. This ship really has nothing aside from the, you know, the quote-unquote raw damage potential. The problem with using quote-unquote raw damage potential is that you actually have to hit what you're aiming at in order to actually get any good solid hits. Well, when your prey can run away from you, there isn't much you can really do. So you saw we, we took a 3,000 off of that Fubuki, and, well, you know, it, it's good to take hit points off of enemy destroyers. We don't need them fussing around too much here. Unfortunately, in terms of targets, there's not a whole lot left. We got a Koenig over here that we can go ahead and engage, and, you know, he's he's bladed to us, he's, he's, he's angled. But, you know, we'll, we'll take the shot anyway. Hey, we managed to get a kill! Alright! Took out a main gun in the process of doing that, too. Not that it mattered, because he died afterwards. <laughs> oh well. I was kind of hoping that that Koenig would go ahead and come around the corner broadside to me, but he's turned out in a way. We're going to go ahead and we're going to keep pushing through, though. Our goal here is to continue to push them away from the center of the map and really trying to keep them away from our carrier in the back. We do have a New York here. Unfortunately, because our guns are traversing, we can't engage him with the full broadside. He's also not paying attention to us. 3,400 damage taken off of him. We get in this kind of running gun battle here, he and I. And, and in team speak, it's funny. If you were in team speak, you'd hear me complaining about the fact that I would take pot shots at him while I'm waiting for my turrets to traverse. 
and they, they would splash all around him or I would do like 2k and then he, he comes back and he does like 8k and it's like, what? Why are his guns more accurate than mine? You know, there's, there's 3400 damage he just took off. And... I also took 3400 damage off of him. And then he takes 8k off. You know, like, how, how does he get that hit, but I can't, you know? <laughs> that that was the frustrating part for me on this. This Fubuki here, it's definitely of concern. I, I want to pay attention to what he's doing. You know, I can take hits from this this New York quite easily, but... Thankfully, the Fubuki dies. 1,000 damage on an overpen on the front. Aim a little bit lower this time. Maybe I can get myself a good solid hit. Okay, almost 8k, and then he takes off 11k. <laughs> what? Uh, we're both pretty much broadside to each other. That's the part that's frustrating. Like, we're, we're both angled at about the same distance from each other, and here, here things are, him being able to do all of this damage. Now he's beached himself. He's broadside to me, beached himself this way, and... Take a pot shot, you think that you should get some form of accuracy bonus. Ooh. 10k. Alright. Well, I'll take that. I'm, I'm not complaining about that. We are going to go ahead and, well, we're going to beach ourselves. At least start to beach ourselves. Not really anything to shoot at here. I can't shoot over this mountain to get to this New York. He can't shoot over it either, thankfully. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get ourselves into a brawl fight with this Colorado if he stays alive long enough. We gotta get there though. But yeah, I found it really interesting that the New York's Wikipedia article. Oop, we got to destroy in our cap. I found it really interesting that it mentioned how reliable and accurate these guns were, and then we play it in game and it's like, uh, what? Unfortunately, we titanic ourselves and, and beach ourselves, which isn't what I wanted at all. And I'm still trying to wiggle and then ah, screw it. We'll just go ahead and uh, we'll just back up off the rock here. And get our four of our gun salvos out to maybe take out this New York. No. Denied. Three hits for, like, 3k, I think is what it ended up being. 3,400. So only, only really one of those actually did anything. The New York doesn't shoot at me. He takes out that Akatsuki. The elephant lady has been destroyed. Unfortunately. Now that we're going forward again, maybe we can actually engage this New York and kill him. And then to put our attention on this Colorado that needs to be destroyed. Nope. RNG says no. Not allowed. So. Fire off the back two. Keeping ourselves angled as much as possible. And I missed. And now he's gone and he's incapacitated a turret temporarily. That's super annoying. We are saving that repair party, though, for the inevitable BS that his dive bomber drops. And the insane amount of fires that they start. Hey, we shot something down. All right. All right. You, you basically missed with that. Took off quite a healthy chunk of him there. And you can hear the bounces, but it didn't do anything to stop the 5,000 damage he did to me. And unfortunately, those torpedo bombers are still in existence and not dead. So we're going to turn. And we're, you notice we've saved the repair party just in case these torpedo bombers get a lucky hit. I'm also going to cut my speed here at the last moment. Ah, just kidding. Not cutting my speed. Didn't need to, because he missed. All right, we've got a Citadel hit on that New York, somehow. 
Now, in a close-in engagement, this is not a, an engagement that I would ever suggest anyone ever partake in. A Colorado will absolutely destroy a New York at these ranges. Those 16-inch guns will overmatch the front armor all day long, and there's really no recourse that you have. If you find yourself in this position, my recommendation is to target the guns. You can see there I did about 8k damage and temporarily knocked out one of his turrets. And you can see my secondaries are going to town. Woo! Unfortunately, we are now out of repairs. And the only thing that I have left that I can really do is to sink this Colorado as quickly as possible before he gets a salvo off. And you always want to keep yourself angled. Thankfully, the New York is really good at staying angled. Unfortunately for this Colorado, no love for you. You do not get to engage me with your 16-inch guns. And I think what happened there is he was turning out and away and the guns weren't able to keep up. I don't know if he's running the reload module on that ship or what. But, I, you know, he lost enough turret speed that he couldn't keep it up, and that, that ultimately hurt him. Now all we have left is a ranger, and I'm, I'm praying for big damage rolls. Actually, I'm praying for the sink, because let's face it, it's far enough out there. Got a nice horizontal spread there. What? What? 7k damage? What? Oh, man. Well, we got torpedo bombers. We're going to turn into them. Make sure you focus those things. Nope. Since they went behind, we're going to go ahead and turn out. And you're going to see he's going to get one torpedo in the back there. And then he dies. That's perfectly okay by me. So this match is basically over at this point. The last ship is a destroyer up by our cap. We've got a cruiser there to engage him. We've got another battleship that's in range. We're almost in range. You know, we've, we've got the points lead, and we've got guys capping their base. So we're not in a bad place. Overall, though, you know, I, I, I really enjoy this ship when you're playing it in a Tier 5 match or, you know, you're the only Tier 5 or there's only a couple of Tier 5s in a Tier 4 fight. In a tier 6 fight, it's not too bad, but in these tier 7 fights, it is a lot of work to get a halfway decent game. And I just, with the number of tier 7s, I'm just not comfortable saying that this ship is a good ship. Until they fix the matchmaking or until they give it something worth actually, you know, using, like, say, improving the accuracy on the ship to bring its stats up to, to par or giving it its, you know, realistic AA complement, kind of like what the Texas has. Took a long-range shot at that uh, Shiratsu, and yeah, no, that's, yeah. <laughs> Our cruiser missed, so we'll take that last salvo and see if it gets there. I, it doesn't get there in time. And now he's dead. All right, so we've won. And like I said, just not a real fan of the ship right now until they fix that matchmaking. Three sinks. Not too bad. 1,483 for the base XP. Let's see, all my damage was an AP shell hits. 222,851 credits. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. You guys know the drill by now. Like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you guys for watching.